And this was an interesting fight because I said Carl Roberson's speed, his uh, knack for, I mean, literally, dude used to fight in glory kickboxing. He is a true kickboxer. I thought Roberson would be a little bit too much, but there's one thing that Roberson did that I found to be very troubling, and this was it right here. He made himself too much of a stationary target. He would sit and just wait for Roundtree to react or to throw something so he can then counter, but he needs to open up his offense to then make Roundtree react so then he can re uh, react to the reaction, counter the counter, right? That didn't really happen, even though he had James Krause in his corner fighting out of Glory MMA, so Glory across the board right there. Just didn't work out. Khalil Roundtree's power was too much, and when he lets go and when he goes downhill, he's as scary as a fighter as we've seen. He took that same pent-up aggression and energy that we saw in the uh, Modestus Bukowskis fight, and he channeled it over here, brother, because once again, he fought Carl Roberson like Roberson owed him money, like he'd beat up his sister or something. Like he, he wanted to hurt that man. That's what I felt watching the fight. Do you agree with the sentiment, and do you think Khalil Roundtree Jr. can continue to win fights like this? Because I have a hot take, and my hot take is no. I don't think it's going to happen against everybody but this was a good matchup for it to happen so what do you think this was a great matchup for it to happen and yeah man i agree with that sentiment wholeheartedly this dude straight up soccer kicked uh, <laughs> uh carl roberson right in the chest man <laughs> not many people would even think to throw a kick when somebody's down on the ground like that to their body but he put all he had man he was that if that was a football that's a 50 yard field goal right there man it was deep yeah, mean. Literally, the first note I have for this fight was mean, man. Roundtree came out, and I, I actually I like the way you praise that because because Roundtree or excuse me, Roberson was kind of letting Roundtree kind of get off on his on his uh, offense, man. And even even though Roundtree, we've talked about it before, he's a one and done fighter. He'll throw those big shots in the comeback, and he was doing that in this fight. He'll throw one big one and then get out, just get away, run away, get back to the center of the octagon, and then come back in, put the pressure on. One big shot, run away again. You know, not necessarily run away like turn and run, but get out, get out of danger. Because Carl Roberson did have the clear speed advantage on that. And he was looking sharp, at least in the first. And then it really started to, you know, wane down after that. So will, will this kind of performance happen for Khalil Roundtree in every single one of his fights? I don't really think so, man. I, I, I know he, he was talking about focus. And he was he really did. You can see how he brought that same energy from the Bukowskis fight to the Roberson fight. But will it keep continuing so on and so forth? I mean, we'll see how much money he's getting paid and then see if that motivation's still there. Yeah, absolutely. The, the point that I was making was more that Khalil Roundtree went no defense, 100% offense. Like he went full offense. And I think that works against some fighters who can't handle the blitz. It's kind of like when Thiago Santos used to do his Santos blitz, the Maheta blitz. Dude just didn't know how to react. They're like, oh my God, this dude's coming at me with too much. So when you drop your hands like that and you go full out offense, you're there to be countered. And if you got a dude who got real pop and real knack for that counter, that timing, it just might be a little bit more uh, of a back and forth trading situation than it is just downhill by Khalil Roundtree. Either way, my man, there's nothing to take away from him tonight. He he came through, dominated. Um, he said, this is my cage. At the center of the octagon, that's mine. I'm taking over. When Carl Roberson, when James Cross yelling at him, use the jab so you can establish the center, fight for the center. There was none of that. It was Roberson being, or it was uh, Roundtree being like, yeah, no, I'm just going to throw a big right hand. You're going to jump back five steps back against the cage. You're going to sit there and I'm going to smash you. I will have a question for you. Just This is a fun one right here. If Khalil Roundtree Jr. threw that soccer kick to the chest of Carl Roberson, Roberson and it happened to land on the head because Roberson just moved the wrong way which it could totally happen like that's what's so also so like crazy about him throwing it is there was reckless abandon it was like yeah fuck it I'm just throwing it and if he hits Roberson's head how long is the man incapacitated for like is, is he in a coma like what do we talk I'm I would be that's my worst nightmare to take a soccer kick full force by Khalil Roundtree Jr. a man of that stature so how long would the man be incapacitated for full force to the head Derek yeah I think uh Roberson's out for we might see the first death in MMA you know yeah. nobody ever wants that but yeah he's out for quite a while man so folks who are like why don't we bring back the pride style soccer kicks and stuff just imagine Khalil Roundtree soccer kicking anybody in their head you're not waking up from that one, man. We're calling that one. Either way, huge win by Khalil Roundtree Jr. I'm interested to see where he goes next because this is a very kind of, I mean, even though the, Carl Roberson is a, is a legitimate fighter, I'm a big fan of his. I love his striking, love his offensive repertoire. I do think that this was a middle of the pack matchup for Khalil Roundtree. And when you are a fighter, you know, like him, man, and let's just take a look at Khalil Roundtree. The last five have been Modestus Bukowskis, Marcin Prochnio, Jan Kutalaba, Eric Anders, Johnny Walker, Gohan Saki, uh, Mikhail Alexichuk, Paul Craig, 
good names, but where do we go from here? That's my question. Is like, what is a win over Bukowskis? You destroyed Bukowskis' knee. You soccer kicked Carl Roberson's chest into oblivion. Um, where do we go from here? Do you have any names off the top of your head, or do you just kind of see uh, a path of where Khalil Roundtree is going? Because against strikers who don't really grapple, yeah, let him smash, right? Once you start throwing those grapplers in there, we have a little bit more of an issue. So do you have anything off the top? Man, the 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 path I see best for Khalil Roundtree is fun. You yeah, know, not necessarily yeah. putting him up against, you know, the biggest oppositions we can see how he is. We kind of know the fighter he is already. I think we need to get this guy some shine yeah. and some just some chaos in the cage. And that'll yeah. really start drawing more people to him. Well, I will say that I am. I just my last note before we move on to this one, uh, move on to the next matchup. But I will say I was very proud to see him say, um, hey, man, at one point I was a teenager. I was 300 pounds. I was very depressed. You know what I mean? I didn't like my life. I was on the edge of suicide. I was on the verge of suicide. And I want to show that this is like my 12 year anniversary of being an MMA fighter. And I just want to show people like, you know, when you lock in and you focus and you do this stuff, like you can accomplish incredible things. And that is a, a great note because we did see just a few fights ago, Roundtree saying, I might call it quits, man. I don't know if I can do this anymore. So to see the turnaround, the mental fortitude, which is the key that we always, uh, you know, kind of compound on over here, say, you got to be mentally tough. You cannot break under soft circumstances because uh, what's the what's the famous quote, AJ? Is it uh, like like easy times create soft men? You know what I mean? Hard times create hard men, da, 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 da. You know, there, you know, so on and so forth. But more or less, man, you got to, especially right now, we have war overall. I mean, this is the most in your face war that we have right now russia ukraine things are getting weird gas is fucking nine dollars a gallon you know what i mean you got to be hard right now and khalil roundtree he showed resolve do you have any words on that because i just think that's a beautiful sentiment and it's even though this is a brutal sport combat sports mixed martial arts that is a beautiful sentiment to take away so i just wanted your words on that Man, I agree with you, Derek. And without foreshadowing too much, man, this is uh, 100% what we're always preaching. And yeah. even to a lot of my clients, a lot of my friends out here that I talk to, this is what I'm always saying needs to happen, man. You can never quit. You can never give up. Yeah. You got to stay grinding because the grind never stops. And unfortunately, when it does stop, it's because you died. And that's not what we want, man. We want to keep it pushing. I, I loved it, bro. I yeah. loved everything. And especially how vicious the fight was. And then going into his his speech right after, man, it was this is exactly what I thought is perfect for Khalil Roundtree, not just as a fighter, but as a person. And the UFC kind of see, you know, can I push push that motive out there that I can go from you know three hundred pounds depressed, ready, ready to you know end it all, to going through twelve years. Twelve years is no joke, man. He put some serious work in, and now he's on TV. Now he's getting the mic in his face. Now he's getting to say this stuff, bring that to light. I loved I loved every moment of it, my brother. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, man. And it also goes to show, last, last thing is that you don't have to be a brute in and out of the cage, right? You could be soft-smoking. You soft-spoken, excuse me, intelligent, emotional. And then when you step into the cage, you're a different animal right there. So you don't always got to be a brute, folks. I want you to remember that because there are a lot of people who love to show their bravado out and do this and that. And there's real consequences in real life, folks. You will go to jail. You will, you know, get sued for a ton of money. These dudes are doing it the smartest way where they're getting paid to beat each other up, man. And that's how you want to do it. Legal sanctioned. Don't go beating up random dudes on the street, man. It's not worth it. Trust me. Trust me.